Who I received from the Lord that what I also delivered to you, that Jesus Christ, on the night that he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. You do this in remembrance of me. We will share this together. We want to thank you, precious Jesus, for the obedience, the sacrifice that you have made to have your body wounded, pierced, nailed, and crucified so that we will be healed in the presence of the Father. You're willing to take the penalty of our sins. You're willing to be forsaken so that we will be forgiven. You were willing to be abandoned so that we will be found. And you were willing to die so that we will be able to live. Thank you, precious Jesus, for dying in my behalf and in behalf of your people. In the same way, in the same manner, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. You do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. We will share this together. We would like to continue trusting and praising your holy name, Jesus Christ, for being willing to have your blood shed even in a shameful and painful way so that we will be able to experience forgiveness of our sins. And that as a result we will not be condemned anymore. Your word says that Without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness of sin. And we thank you for being willing to take that punishment at the cross so that we will be reconciled to you by that separation that we have experienced from the time of the cross. And we would like to continue declaring that you are good and your goodness endures forever. For whenever we End of this bread and drink this cup of the Lord. We continue to proclaim the death of the Lord Jesus Christ every single moment of the day, even until the day when the Lord returns. Amen. And uh, we would like to ask Pastor Anthony to please come and we will pray for him and bless him. This, this is an amazing guy. I, I could not do what he's doing. I could not do what he's doing because he has his own job at the same time leading this about 40 people that are attending every Sunday in uh, Catholic Church. Uh, but this guy is just wired with something that is special. And we just pray and bless for this uh, man of God. We would like to thank you, Father, for this opportunity of having Pastor Anthony come and share his life, his ministry, including the message of your word and i ask that you will overhaul his preparation so that whatever that he's going to say or share and impart to us is something that is purely coming from your loving father i ask that your presence will really empower and allow him to receive special of anointing coming from you so that he would be able to mainly impart and bless us with the message of your word and may the words of his mouth and the meditation of his heart be pleasing and be acceptable unto you, even as he ministers to us, O God, through your word. And we give you praises and glory. Amen. Amen. Let's give the time to Pastor Anthony. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? Good. Can I speak in Cantonese? <laughs> <laughs> Do you know Cantonese? <laughs> no, no. I seldom uh, preach in English. <laughs> so uh, if you don't, you don't understand, ask me later. <laughs> um, I would like to uh, share with you with a um, title. Uh, I have a PowerPoint. Is it uh, ready? Yeah. Okay. Oh, it's just so hard for me. <laughs> That's okay. Huh? The title is A Man Who Wait. Uh, I don't know what are you waiting for right now. 
Oh, are you waiting for lunch? <laughs> <laughs> um, today is uh, Easter Sunday. Huh? Uh, what's the meaning of Easter? I think a lot of you know about that. Huh? It symbolizes Jesus Christ's victory over death. Jesus did not just die on the cross. He also resurrected three days after his death. If he merely died and had not resurrected, he would have been just an ordinary teacher or rabbi. However, he, his resurrection proved that he was really the son of God and that he had conquered death. Another important point about Jesus' resurrection is that since Jesus has resurrected, we believers can be resurrected after we die too. The Bible says that believers in Jesus will have eternal life. We will be with God forever in eternity. Therefore, we do not need to be afraid of death. Besides resurrection, what else do we know about Jesus? Did everyone love Jesus in his ministry on earth? Is the salvation for Israel only? So today, I would like to share with you a story, a story of a man who saw Jesus, and Jesus was a baby. The man, his name is Simeon, and um, this man told us something about our salvation through Jesus, and also about how people react with his message, with his gospel. And the story is in Luke chapter 12, uh, from verse 25 to uh, 35. That's the wrong number, it should be 35. Uh, next. Okay, uh, um, can we read the story together? Okay, uh, verse 25. Now there was a man in Jerusalem called Simeon, who was righteous and evil. He was waiting for the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit was on him. And I knew it would be to him that the Holy Spirit that he would not die before he had seen the Lord Messiah. Moved by the Spirit, he went into the temple court, and the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him what the custom of the law required. Simeon took him in his arms and praised God, saying, Sovereign Lord, as you have promised, you may now deceive your servant in peace. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the sight of all nations, a light of salvation to Gentiles and the glory of your people Israel. The child's father and mother marveled at what was said about him. And Simeon blessed them and said to Mary, his mother, This child is destined to cause the falling and rising of many in Israel, and to be a sign that will be spoken against, so that the thoughts of many hearts will be revealed, and the sword will please your own soul too. Okay, that's <laughs> okay. Yeah, next slide. Yeah, okay, good. <laughs> yeah. I would like to uh, give you some background about the story first. In verse 27, he said, um, the parent brought the child Jesus to do for him what the custom of the law required. Here the parents are the parents of Jesus, right? Joseph 
and Mary. So what did they want to do with Jesus? The scriptures say they want to do what the law required. And then you will ask, what did the law require? If you read two verses before this story, verse 23, he say, as it is written in the law of the Lord, every firstborn male is to be consecrated to the Lord. So, Joseph and Mary wanted to dedicate Jesus to the Lord. They went to Jerusalem and to the temple to do the dedication. And that's when the story happened. Now let's take a look at what Simeon understood about the salvation. In verse 30 to 32, he says, For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the sight of all nations, a light for revelation to the Gentiles and the glory of your people Israel. To Simeon, Understand, understanding the salvation is for all nations. It's not only for the people of Israel. It's also for the Gentiles. This is a very revolutionary idea. At that time, Israel was under the government of, of whom? Roman Empire. The Israelite we're waiting for a Messiah. Mm -hmm. talking. Waiting for Messiah to be a political Messiah, a military Messiah, and a strong leader who would lead Israel to be independent from the Roman Empire. Okay. Now in the verse 25, it says that he was waiting for the consolation of Israel. The word, the word consolation means comfort to most Israelites. In their mind, they expect the Messiah to bring them comfort. They hope that they could become a great nation again. They hope that the Messiah would like uh, the King David or King Solomon. They hope this Messiah will uh, make the nation great again, independent from the Roman Empire. They never expected the Messiah will die on the cross and never thought the salvation is for all nations. The Simeon understand the salvation is for all nations. It is because of this truth that today we can come together to the same church to worship God together. No matter who we, who we are, no matter we are Filipinos, or we are Chinese, or we are Americans, or we are Indians, or any other ethnic groups we all can receive the salvation of Jesus and we can become brothers and sisters in, in Jesus Christ. When I read about uh, the Chinese church history, I'm amazed by the good work done by the Western missionaries in China. About 100 years ago, China was still a uh, closed nation, not open, uh, and politically is in a chaos. They did not welcome new ideas from the uh, Western world. They believe that Christianity is for Western people only. Jesus is not suitable for Chinese. But at that period of time, a lot of missionaries from Europe and America went to China. They translate the Bible to Chinese. They build a lot of schools, hospitals, orphanage, 
and did a lot of social work for the Chinese. Some of them even uh, went to rural area where far away from the big cities. They lived together with the local Chinese village people there. However, not all missionaries were welcomed by the Chinese people. They encountered a lot of difficulties. At one point, the Chinese government have forced all the missionaries out of China. They have to leave. Some of them were killed and could not go back to their homelands. Some choose to stay even though their lives were at risk. They did all this because they were touched by, the, by God's love and they believe God's salvation is for all nations. Amen. The Chinese Christian Church today can keep on growing is because a lot of Western missionaries have paved the path a long time ago. They sacrificed their lives just like Jesus sacrificed his life on the cross. Amen. So brothers and sisters, let's remember this truth in our hearts. God's salvation is for all nations. One thing that I like Beach Church is that different ethnic groups can come together and worship together. Even though we speak different language, we can worship together because Jesus died on the cross for us. Another thing we need to remember, the gospel, the gospel is not for us only. After we accept Christ and become Christians, we need to share the gospel with other people. We need to share the gospel not just to our families and friends. We also do need to share the gospel with people who are not from our country, not the same as ethnic group as us. Maybe one day, God also called us to become missionaries and share the gospel in other places around the world. Amen? Amen. Okay, beside the truth that salvation is for all nations, another truth that Simeon understand was the effort of the effect of the gospel on different people. The gospel can reveal the thoughts of many hearts. After hearing the gospel, people may believe in it or they may reject it. So, uh, in verse uh, 35 uh, or 34, uh, it says that this child is destined to cause the falling and rising of many. So what does the falling and rising of man means? Let us uh, first understand what the gospel is. On Mark uh, chapter uh, 1, uh, verse 15, Jesus said, The time has come. The kingdom of God is near. Repent and believe the good news. Good news is gospel. One thing that we must do before we believe in Christ is to repent. Why do we need to repent? Because we are sinners. According to the Bible, we are all sinners. When we become Christians, we need to bow down before God and agree that we are sinners. We need to believe that we cannot save ourselves by our own acts. The only way that our sin can be forgiven is to accept Jesus as our Savior. He died on the cross and His blood can clean our sins once for all. In the book of Romans, Paul states that even though God is our Creator, we choose to reject Him. We don't honor Him as our God. 
This is an example of sin. When you tell a person that he's a sinner, he may not accept it. He may think that he has not committed any crime. He, don't, he doesn't understand the meaning of the sin described in the Bible. Some people may agree that we are sinners, but they believe they can deal with the sin by themselves. And they can do a lot of good work, they can donate a lot of money to help poor and the needed, and they don't need crisis, and they don't believe in Jesus. So that is the phrase, to cause the falling of many, means. People, after hearing the gospel, they don't repent. They continue on their own way, as the Bible says. And there's a, a, a lot of people who follow Jesus, when Jesus starts to preach the gospel. But also a lot of Jesus' followers eventually left him. And uh, as in uh, Roman, uh, in Roman 9, chapter 9, they, they stumbled over the stumbling stone. So that's the people. They left Jesus. But on the other hand, uh, there are people who hear gospel and believe it and accept that we are sinners. Some break down into tears and ask Jesus for forgiveness. They repent wholeheartedly and become a real follower of Jesus. They grow spiritually day by day, and they are willing to witness Jesus and to tell the gospel to other people. And that's the, the cause to cause the rising of many means. I have experienced the falling and rising in my own way to become a Christian. I remember that when I was uh, in high school, my classmates told me the gospel and asked me to accept Jesus Christ uh, as my savior. But at that time, I didn't believe it. I didn't believe that I am a sinner. I reject the invitation. But later on, as I start to work, I have more experience about man's uh, sinful nature and weakness. Finally, my heart was softened, and I repent, and I accept Jesus Christ as my Savior. Brother, sister, when we introduce the gospel to other people, don't be surprised that some say, some may reject it and some may accept it. If they reject it, don't be too sad and blame on yourself too much because it's God's power to change people's hearts, not ours. We can continue to pray for those who have not accepted Jesus Christ yet. Ask God to soften their hearts. And one day, when they accept Christ, we can celebrate with them and give thanks to God. Simeon understands that salvation is for all nations. He understands that different people have different reactions to the gospel. He also understands that followers of Jesus will have suffering. In verse 34, Say, Jesus was a sign that will be spoken against. In Jesus' ministry on earth, a lot of people against him. As we know from the Easter story, people hate Jesus so much that they put him on the cross, even though he did not commit any crime. When Jesus was on trial, People just shout, crucify him, crucify him. Take a look at uh, Jesus' mother, Mary. He support Jesus' ministry and follow Jesus all the time. But here, Simeon 
said to Mary, and he sought you peace your own soul too. If you were Mary, when you heard that statement, what would you feel? It's not easy for Mary to have a son like Jesus. Especially, he had to see Jesus being tortured by the... We come to church on Sunday, we wait for the worship to end. There's a uh, interesting uh, statistic report. On average, the time we spend before the traffic light add up to six months in our life. And we also spend five years to wait on different kinds of lines. So therefore, some people always take a book with, him, with them. They read the book and they are waiting. So it's a very good way to spend our time. And we also uh, always say uh, something is worth to wait uh, and something is not worth to wait. So in this world, what things are worth for us to wait for the whole life? If we are willing to wait for a thing for the whole life, this thing must be very valuable to us such as my wife. I wait for her. <laughs> Do you wait for her? <laughs> but to see me or not, the willingness to wait represents two things. First, he knew that Jesus is very valuable. Therefore, he waited. Second, it shows that Simeon was a faithful man. He had faith in God and he was willing to wait until he dies. Brother, sister, do not lose our faith in God. I, I, as I have said before, we may encounter difficulties in our lives, but it's normal. We need to keep our faith. It takes a long time for believers to grow spiritually. Sometimes we need to learn how to wait. A pastor says, waiting is the necessary path to spiritual growth. Sometimes things do not happen as what we expected. And maybe that's God wants us to wait. And there's a question you may ask. Simeon, wait for Jesus. Now Jesus has come and resurrected uh, about uh, 2,000 years ago. What do we Christians today wait for? What are we waiting for? The answer is we wait for the second coming of Jesus Christ. The Bible says that Jesus will come to this world again in the future. In his second coming, Jesus will come in glory and will judge the world. But we don't know when this will happen. The Bible says nobody will know the time except for God himself. So, we may not see Jesus' second coming in this generation, but let us keep our faith in Him and don't give up. Even though we may have suffering, let's continue to have faith. Let us continue to live a righteous and devoted life. If we keep our faith for sure, we will see Jesus face to face in heaven. So let us review what we learned today. First, salvation is for all nations. Second, gospel has different effects on different people. Some may accept it, some may reject it. And third, the life of Christian may not be easy. We may encounter difficulties. 
and finally, fourth, let's continue to have faith and live a righteous and devout life. Let's pray together. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you. Thank you for your salvation. Bring us together. No matter we are Philippines or we are Chinese or other ethnic groups. Thank you for that. And help us to be a righteous and devout Christian. And pass the gospel to our neighbors, to our co-workers, friends and families. Bless us and help us to be strong. We pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen.